Guten Abend allerseits. Let us open with a prayer. Lasst uns mit Gebet öffnen. Dear Father in heaven, Lieber Vater im Himmel, Lord, we come to you now. Herr, wir kommen jetzt vor dir. And, uh, we believe that Jesus is our righteousness. Und wir glauben wohl, dass Jesus unsere Gerechtigkeit sei. And that beside him there is no righteousness. Und außer ihm gebe es keine Gerechtigkeit. And we confess, Lord, that we are not worthy to appear before you in our own strength. Und wir bekennen, dass wir nicht würdig sind, vor dir im eigenen Kraft zu treten. Our hearts are full, full of enmity and bitterness. Unsere Herzen sind voller Streit und Bitterkeit gegen dich. And against each other. Und gegen einander. And we ask you, Lord, that you have mercy upon us. Und wir beten jetzt, dass du Gnade und Erbarmen auf uns hast. That you remind us of the word of God, what you laid down before us dass du daran erinnerst an das Wort Gottes, die du vor uns gelegt hast. And how Christ had, uh, how Christ character is. Und wie Christi Charakter ist. And that we are so unlike him. Und dass wir so ähm, unähnlich wie Christus sind. But we believe, Father, that as we go forward and follow the prophetic narrative, you are able to form us into his image. Aber wir glauben wohl, dass als wir vorangehen und folgen, das prophetische Erzählung, dass du uns in sein Ebenbild wandeln wirst. Dadurch, deswegen bitten wir, dass du jetzt all unsere Sünden vergibst. And that you please bless your word. Und dass du dein Wort jetzt segnest. That you please, uh, pour your spirit upon us. Dass du deinen Heiligen Geist auf uns gießt. That you please rebuke Satan on our behalf. Dass du den Satel unseretwegen tadelst. And um, uh, that you please forgive us all the evil thoughts that you, we might have had against each other today. Und dass du uns all die böse Gedanken vergibst, die wir möglicherweise gegeneinander heute gehabt haben. And that you know cleanse us and make us ready to worship you. Und dass du uns reinigst und uns vorbereitest, dass wir dich wahrlich anbeten können. And we praise you and thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Wir preisen dich und danken dir für all dies in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Right, so <clears throat> I actually expected that uh, the board was still there from this morning. Also, ich habe erwartet, dass die Tafel noch ähm, mit den Linien von heute Morgen noch drauf wäre. But it doesn't matter. I will find the time to draw it back. Aber das macht nichts. Ich werde mir wohl den Zeit jetzt finden müssen, das wieder drauf zu tun. Okay. Um, <coughs> I post the notes. So the notes are in the live stream. So this evening we want to look a little bit again about the south and the east and the destruction of the cities. So heute Abend wollen wir weiterhin über das Süden und das Osten anschauen, die Zerstörung, die Städte. Okay, let's just read the first two quotes. Und in den Notizen, diese ersten zwei Zitaten, wollen wir jetzt lesen. And maybe Belmas, you can read the first, and then Maris, you can read the second. Last Friday morning, just before I awoke, a very impressive scene was presented before me. I seemed to awake from sleep, but was not in my home. From the windows, I could behold a terrible conflagration. Great balls of fire were falling upon houses, and from these balls, fiery arrows were flying in every direction. It was impossible to check the fires that were kindled, and many places were being destroyed. The terror of the people was indescribable. After a time I awoke and found myself at home. 
In the night I was, I thought, in a room, but not in my own house. I was in a city where I knew not, and I heard explosion after explosion. I rose up quickly in bed and saw from my window large bolts of fire. Jetting out were sparks in the form of arrows, and buildings were being consumed. And in a very few minutes the entire block of buildings was falling, and the screeching and mournful groans came distinctly to my ears. I cried out in my raised position to learn what was happening, where I am, and where is our family circle. Then I awoke. But I could not tell where I was, for I was in another place than home. I said, O oh Lord, where I and what shall I do? It was as a voice that spoke, Be not afraid, nothing shall harm you. Uh, I was instructed the destruction of both of them cities. The word of the Lord will be fulfilled. Uh, Isaiah 29. 9 to 24 was repeated. I dare not move, not knowing where I was. I cried out to the Lord, what does it mean? These representations of destruction were repeated. Where am I? Uh, in scenes, I've represented that which will be, but want my people to cease from, pitting, uh, from putting their trust in men who are not obedient to my warnings, and who despise my reproof. For the day of the Lord is right upon the world, when evidence shall be made sure. Those who have all the voices that would turn things upside down will themselves be turned where they cannot see, but will be as blind men. These words were given to me from Isaiah 30. Now go write it before them in a table, and note in a book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and forever. And this is a rebellious people, the lying children, children that will not hear the law of the law which say to the seer, see not, and to the prophet, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy the sign. Yes, okay, so speaks about the destruction of the cities, right? So spricht über die Zerstörung von Städten. And what is to come down? Und was soll herabkommen? Yes, falls of fire, right? Kügeln von Feuer. Typified by which event? So, vorausgeschattet durch welche Ereignis? Nein, aber... Nein, nein, nein. Elf September. Okay. So, and who were these balls of fire back then? Und wer waren diesen Feuerbälle damals? You mean in 9-11? Mm -hmm. So, to the 11th September. Caused by Islam flying planes into the buildings. Yes. Verursacht durch den Islam, die Flugzeuge in Gebäuden hineingeflogen haben. Okay. So... <coughs> And in the last quote we read, Und in den letzten Zitat, die wir gelesen haben, yeah, she quotes Isaiah 29 and Isaiah 30. Right? Sie zitiert Jesaja 29 und Jesaja 30. So let's go to Isaiah 30. So lasst uns zu Jesaja 30 gehen. She, she quotes directly Isaiah 30, verse 8 to 15. Und sie zitiert Jesaja 30, die Verse 8 bis 15 direkt. So, and we looked at this quite recently. Und das haben wir neulich angeschaut. Okay, so, let's just read verse 15 again. So, lasst uns äh, Vers 15 lesen. So, so, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength and he would not. So this is basically where they reject now the rest, which is a refreshing, right? Da spricht über die Zeit, wo sie die Erquickung, was die Ruhe Gottes ist, verwerfen. Okay, and when you jump down to verse 23, wenn wir bis Vers 23 herunterkommen, let's read verse 23 to 26, die Verse 23 bis 26, then shall he give the rain of thy seed that thou shalt sow the ground with all, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fed and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. 
So what is it describing? So was beschreibt es hier bis Vers 23 haben wir gelesen? Seven years of plenty. Yes, the seven years of plenty. Die right? sieben Jahre der Fülle. Which And is in the time of peace. Yes, which is was in der kleinen Zeit des Friedens stattfindet. Right. It's a little time of peace. And that's the seven year of plenty. Die kleine Zeit des Friedens und das ist auch gleich die sieben Jahre der Fülle. Right. So, and that's the rain that comes down at this Wehmer. Right? Das ist das Regen, der hier an diese Wegmarke herabkommt. Typified by the baptism of Christ. Vorausgeschattet durch die Taufe Christi. Yes, or the mighty angel of Revelation 10 coming down here. Oder der mächtige Engel von Offenbarung 10, der hier herabkommt. Or what else? Oder was noch? Uh, let's keep your finger in Isaiah 30. So, halt den Platz hier in Isaiah 30. Just to remind ourselves uh, the Psalm 68. Nur zur Erinnerung, Psalm 68. Read, let's read uh, verses 8 and 9. Die Verse 8 und 9. And uh, I think David, your turn. Want to read this first, please? The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it was with Yes, okay, so here we see Mount Sinai when he shook the heavens and the earth. And what did he send? So here can we see Berg Sinai, where the Himmel and Erde erschüttert hat, and what hat he gesagt? A plan for rain, right? Überfluss an Regen. So, and we understand this is also Pentecost, right? Wir verstehen, dass das auch Pfingsten markiert. Okay. And then also verse 12. Und Vers 12 auch noch. It says, Kings of armies did flee apace, and she that tarried at home divided the spoil. So here we see then the kings hasten away. Right? Und hier können wir auch sehen, die Könige, die wegfliehen. Okay. Alright, so let's go back to Isaiah 30. So, zurück zu Jesaja 30. And we read verse 23, now let's read verse 24 onward. So, we have bis Vers 23 gelesen, jetzt Vers 24 bis 26. The oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which hath been winnowed with a shovel and with a fan. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. So here we see, right, the Bible marks when this plentiful rain is poured out, what happens? So, Vers 25, die Bibel markiert, wenn dieser Überfluss an Regen ausgegossen wird, was geschieht? The towers fall. Die Türme right. stürzen. Right. And on 9-11, right, these towers fell. Und am 11. September, diese Türme sind zu Stürze gekommen. Right. So, <coughs> Verse 26. Jetzt Vers 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the of seven days, and the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. Um, we looked at this also a couple of days ago. Vor einige Tagen haben wir das auch angeschaut. And in Ho Hosea 6 he says he will first smite you and tear you. So in Hosea 6, er sagt, er wird dich zuerst schlagen und zerreißen. But then on the third day he will bind you up. Right? Aber am dritten Tag wird er dich binden. Mm -hmm. fair, fair bin. Fair bin. Yes. Okay. So that's when he binds you up and he will... And he comes to you as then yes. by former... Right? Yes, he comes to... Yes, yes. Er wird dich verbinden und kommt zu dir wie der Früh- und Spätregen. Alright, so... <coughs> Um, yes, good. So, my point was, actually, all right, here we can therefore see the east wind. So, okay. my point is, is that here on this way, Mark, we can see the east wind. Erkennen. Okay, so, clearly you can see the east wind. And the east wind is likened here unto these balls of fire. Und okay. das Ostwind wird hier durch diese Feuerbälle verglichen. So, fire from heaven. So, Feuer vom Himmel. Alright. 
Now let's go to Revelation 11. Jetzt gehen wir zur Offenbarung 11. Das ist in die Notizen. Revelation 11, uh, verse, verse 7. Verse 7. And uh, then you want to read verse 7 for us, please? So what what is it and where do we mark it? So was ist das und wo markieren wir das? Yes. And what event is it? Also am Mitternachtsruf und welches Ereignis ist das? French Revolution. Right? Die Französische Revolution. FR for French Revolution. So, FR, Französische Revolution. Alright, so, <clears throat> and let's read verse 13 and 14 now. So, jetzt die Verse 13 und 14. It says, In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So, what do we see? What is the Bible linking together? So, was können wir sehen? Wo, was verbindet die Bibel um, zusammen? South and the East. Yes, exactly. Okay. Das Süden und das Osten. Because now the South, the French Revolution, is tied together with the Second War. Right? Hier den Süden, den Französische Revolution, ist mit dem Zweiten Wehr in Verbindung gebracht. And from where to where do we mark the Second War? Und von wo bis wo markieren wir der Zweite Wehr? Yes. So von Mitternachtsruf bis zur finalen Untersuchung. Okay, so therefore. It's exactly also where the French Revolution begins. So, so gerade da, wo die französische Revolution yeah. anfängt. Begins also the Second World the with uh, with Islam. So yeah. fängt der zweite Wehr mit dem Islam an. And they both end at the same time. Und beide yeah. kommen zur ihre Ende an der gleichen Stelle. Okay, and we already established right. Right here, it's a work of the South and the East. Und okay. wir haben bereits etabliert, dass gerade hier ist es ein Werk vom Süden und Osten. Yeah, because the deadly wound is given by the south. Right? Das tödliche Wunde werde durch den Süden vollstreckt. And we already mentioned that 9-11, uh, we can therefore conclude, uh, based upon these principles, uh, that both Islam and the globalists were i involved in this <coughs> incident. Okay. Und wir können bereits uh, erkennen, durch 11. September, dass sowohl Islam als auch diese uh, Globalisten dass die beide da involviert wurden in diese Ereignis. Alright, so, so we have the south here and the east. Okay. Das Süden und das Osten hier markiert. Okay, so... Now let's go to Revelation 18. So, jetzt gehen wir zur Offenbarung 18. Wieder, das ist in den Notizen. Revelation 18, verse 21. Offenbarung 18 und Vers 21. Now speaks about the destruction of Babylon here. Spricht über die Zerstörung Babylons. It says, um, is this at an end? Of morning? This was please. Offenbarung 18, 21. And the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Yes. Okay, so how is Babylon likened now? So, mit was wird Babylon here verglichen? With a stone being cast into the sea. Wie right? ein Stein, der ins Meer geworfen wird. Okay. So, let's go to... Um, Jeremiah 51. So jetzt so Jeremia 51. Das ist nicht in den Notizen. Let's read verse 63 and 64. Jeremia 51. So 
Die Verse 63 und 64. Ja, 53. No, 63, 64. So 63 und 64. Die Verse 63 und 64 in Jesaja 51. Jeremia. Jeremiah 51, 63 and 64. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt find a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the altar. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring up upon her. And they shall be weary. Thus Far are the words of Jeremiah. Yes. All right. In, in the chapters beforehand, also in the Kapitel um, davor, chapter 50 and 51, Kapitel 50 und 51, who was brought against Babylon? Wer wurde gegen Babylon um, aufgerichtet? Meets in the Persian. Die Meder und den Perser. Okay. So basically, this evil that is coming upon Babylon in this context would be the Medes and the Persians. Right? So in diesem Zusammenhang von dem, was wir gelesen haben, die Meder und Perser werden das Übel, die gegen Babylon kommen wird. And it's illustrated by Babylon being cast into the seas. Right? Und das wird dargestellt durch Babylon, wie es in den Gewässer oder in den Meere ähm, verworfen, geworfen wird. Chapter 50, verse 40 says, "It's like when the river flows, so it will be Yes. Kapitel 50 und Vers 40 vergleicht es wie der Sturz von Sodom und Gomorra, yes. was dem yes. Feuer und Schwefel äh, sein wird. So we have, it's been cast into the sea and it's overthrown with fire and brimstone. So right? es wird in den See äh, geworfen und es wird mit Feuer und Schwefel Alright. Ähm, Verbrannt. Yes. Now let's go to Nehemiah chapter 9. So jetzt gehen wir zu Nehemia in Kapitel 9. Because in Ezekiel 31, who is likened to each other? Then in Ezekiel 31, wer wird miteinander ähm, gleichgestellt? In, in Ezekiel 31, who is, okay. is compared to each other? And, or, or Pharaoh and, and Assyria. Yes. Also Pharaoh und uh, Assyria. And Assyria is compared to whom? Und Assyria wird mit wem verglichen? Babylon. Yes. Yeah. So Babylon, Assyria and Egypt can represent all the same power. Okay? Also, gemäß die, diesen Kapitel Babylon, Assyrien und Ägypten können alle derselbe Macht darstellen. So we saw that Babylon is being thrown into the midst of the seas. Wir haben gesehen, dass Babylon inmitten des der Meere geworfen wird. But it's also overthrown like Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. Aber es wird auch ähm, overthrown. Uh, umgestürzt. Danke. Es wird auch umgestürzt wie Sodom und Gomorrah. Now let's go to Nehemiah 9 verse 11. So jetzt gehen wir zum Nehemiah Kapitel 9 Because Vers 11. Now we look at Pharaoh or Egypt. Jetzt schauen wir Pharao an oder Ägypten. Um, is this a Susi? Read this for us please. 9 11. Okay. Okay. So how is Pharaoh and his army compared? So wie wird Pharaoh und seine Armeen hier verglichen? Just like the deadly wound. Also genau wie der tödliche Wunde oder wie Babylon der ins Meer geworfen. Like a stone, right? Wie ein Stein. Also Babylon was a stone cast into the midst of the sea. Right? Auch Babylon war ein Stein, der im Mitteln des See geworfen wurde. So now let's go to Exodus chapter 
14. So, lasst uns jetzt zu ähm, 2. Buch Mose, Kapitel 14 gehen. Und let's read um, verse 21. Let's read verse 21. So, verse 21, when we read. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Okay. So, what caused the waters to be divided? So, was hat um, verursacht, dass die Wassern zerteilt werden? A strong east wind. Yes. Ein starker Ostwind. Okay, so... So we see here now the east wind causes this division. So okay. we can see that the east wind this zerteilung verursacht. And it provides a way of escape for God's people. And it gives auch einen um, ein uh, ein Fluchtweg für Gottes Volk. Yes. All right, and and then the, we understand the Egyptians they go into the seas. And right? we understand the story that the Egyptians they follow in the sea. And then. What happened? And what happened? Yeah, the, the, the seas, right? They, in the midst so, of the seas, they get broken. Also, we know that in the midst of the seas, they get broken. So, the sea comes back to us. We saw it. Uh, let, let's read here Exodus 15. So, the second book of Moses 15. And let's read verse 4 and 5. The verse 4 and 5. It says, Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. stone. Okay. So here we see uh, both get drowned in the, in the midst of the seas. So here can we see beide werden ertrinken im Mitten des, der Meere. Okay. So in what are the seas a representation of? Und was stellen diese Meere dar? Yes, the nations. The nations. Right? And the nations would be what? And the nations were then what? South. Yes, would be the south, right? And the König der Süden, so okay. the Südmacht. So we see basically the south yeah, inflicts this deadly wound here on Egypt or on Babylon. So we can see that the Südmächten here diese tot tödliche Wunde auf Ägypten in diesem Fall oder auch Babylon, wie wir gesehen haben. Uh, so let's go to Ezekiel 30. So jetzt zu Ezekiel 30. Verse um, 20, 23 to 24. And we read the verses 23 and 24. I think it's remarkable. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and put my sword in his hand, and I will break Pharaoh's arms, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. Yes. Okay, so what do we see here about... Um, about... Pharaoh? So, what can we see here about Pharaoh? Deadly wound. Yes, he receives the deadly wound. Right? Er erhielt eine tödliche Wunde. And who is causing him the deadly wound? Und wer verursacht diese tödliche Wunde? The, the terrible nations. Yes, the, Nebuchadnezzar. Right? Nebuchadnezzar. Because when we go back to verse 11, then when we bis Vers 11 zurückgehen, or let's read verse 10 and 11, or sogar die Verse 10 und 11, Uh, Maris, you want to read this one? Thus says the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people within the terrible of the nation shall be brought to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. 
Yes, okay, so here we see, it's, in verse 10 it says it's Babylon, uh, um, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So in verse 10 sagt, es ist Nebuchadnezzar, König von Babylon. It says he and his people with him, the terrible of the nations. Sagt er und sein Volk mit ihm, der Schrecken der Nation. So Nebuchadnezzar and his people are the terrible of the nations. Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> und sein Volk sind der Schrecken des Na der Nation. And they will cause the deadly wound to Egypt. Und die werden äh, Ägypten den tödliche Wunde strecken. Okay, so therefore which power would this represent in this illustration? Diese Darstellung, welche Macht würde das darstellen? Okay, so. Yes, the South, right? Ich werde wieder der, den Südmachtmächten sagen. So, but this is obviously now a little bit Confusion, right? Aber das scheint etwas verwirrend jetzt zu sein. Because Nebuchadnezzar is actually the king of the north and Egypt is actually the king of the south. Weil Nebuchadnezzar ist eigentlich der König des Nordens und Ägypten des Kön der König des Südens. Okay. So, I just want to show this here and we have to look at this a little bit. Ich wollte das nur zeigen, und wir, dass wir das etwas anschauen. Why are you saying that? Because you just, you just understand that these are the kings. And the Nebuchadnezzar represents Christ, so it's not, it's not about that. So you're not looking at it uh, in this literal context. I mean, Egypt, are, yes, they are the kings, right? Also in the sense. Stellen die Könige da in dem Sinne. In the sense that they are now under the control of the papacy. Right? In dem Sinne, dass sie unter den Vorherrschaft des Papsttums stehen. So, so they're not the south. It's not, it's not representing the south that rises against the north. That's all we're saying. Yes. No, confusion, here it's no, no, it's just on the first side it looks confusing, right? Also, auf ersten Anhieb scheint das uh, verwirrend aus. Yeah, but when you, because, when you when you just read there that Egypt gets cast into the like a stone and Babylon gets cast in like a stone, Babylon gets a deadly wound, Egypt gets a deadly wound. You know that the kings are Egypt, is the dragon that they sit on, and you know that the woman is Babylon. And you have all the pieces, so there's no... Yes, no, it's, it's, but it's, it would be, in first glance, it would be confusing, right? Because actually, to whom? Nebuchadnezzar would be the north and Egypt would be the south. Yeah, but to whom? But we, we know that it's not, so I don't know if we have to no. go, go there. Yes, no, just mention it, because I believe that people, when they hear these things, they think, hey, how can this be? Okay. Yes, I mean, the very first time, like years ago, I mean, it must have been... Eight or nine years ago, I asked this question: Why is why is Babylon punishing Tyre? Right? When when Sister White says Tyre is the papacy, yes. right? How can that be? Yes. Nobody could give me an answer. I mean, it's just taken a long time, but we understand it. So all I'm saying is, we already understand that. So, yes. Um, yes, so it's basically that's a good point, right? With Babylon punishing Tyre. So this is a good point that Babylon Tyros bestraft. Okay. So, because uh, it doesn't make sense that the king of the north punishing, the king of the north, punishing yes. itself. Right? Weil wenn man das so verstehen würde, dass beide der König des Nordens darstellen werden, das macht keinen Sinn, dass der König des Nordens sich selbst bestraft. Okay, so I just want to keep this point here in mind that Nebuchadnezzar and uh, his people is the terrible of the nations. So, ich möchte nur, dass wir daran denken, dass uh, Nebuchadnezzar und sein Volk wird als der Schrecken der Nationen dargestellt. And illustrates the South Power. Und das stellt den Südmächten dar. Okay, so when we go now to Ezekiel 28. Und wenn wir jetzt zu Ezekiel 28 gehen. And let's read now verse uh, 7 to 8. Und lass uns die Verse 7 und 8 lesen. And this is now the punishment upon Tyre. Das spricht hier über die Bestrafung über Tyrus. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. It's a punishment upon Tyrus. So die Bestrafung auf Tyrus. And Tyrus or Tyre is which power? The papacy. 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 Tyrus okay. ist der Papst. So let's read who punishes Tyre. So lasst uns lesen, wer Tyrus bestraft. It says, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the... Terrible, terrible of the nations. Nation. So who comes upon Tyre? So where comes of Tyros? This power here, right? Also, diese Macht hier. Okay. So 
and they shall draw their swords against the, thy, uh, the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defy thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Okay, so we see Tyre gets cast into the midst of the seas. So we can see that Tyros in the der of the geworfen wird. Babylon gets cast into the midst of the seas. Babylon in the der of the seas. geworfen wird. And Egypt. And right? auch Egypt. So all these three entities represent the same power and they all get punished by the seas by the terrible of the nations. So okay. all these three entities stellen denselben Macht dar und alle drei werden bestraft durch den selben Entität der Schrecken der Nationen der Südmacht. Okay, everybody can follow so far. Can you just follow so far? I'm not, I'm so much disagreeing, I'm just, I want to, why, why do you say terrible nations he thinks it's south? I get that the south is involved, but why specifically the south? So, warum ist der Schrecken der Nationen spezifisch der Süden? Also ich weiß, dass die involviert sind, aber spezifisch, warum sind die der Südmacht? Because they bring you into the midst of the seas, right? This But, weil sie bringen dir sie bringen dir inmitten der Meere das sind die die das tödliche Wunde gegen dir bringen denn wir haben bereits in Hesekiel 30 gelesen Vers 24 sagt es oder sogar Vers 11 wollen wir noch mal lesen Vers 11 oder sogar Vers 11 wollen wir noch mal lesen It says, he, Nebuchadnezzar, and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. Mm -hmm. And then in verse uh, 24. And then in verse 24. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, yes. which is he and his people, right? Yes. And put my sword in his hand, but I will break Pharaoh's arm, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. Okay, so is this not a parallel? To Cyrus. So is that not a parallel to Kyros? Cyrus is also uh, he's a heathen king. Cyrus is a heathen king, but they're both playing the part of Christ. Yes. So Kyros and Nebuchadnezzar here are both heathenish kings, and both play the role of Christ. They both come with their armies. And they both come with their armies. Okay. And they both punish the king of the north. And yes. both bring a punishment on the king of the north. Okay, and I'm just saying that because it says in Ezekiel 28, in Ezekiel 28, because it says the east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. It says that the east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. Ezekiel 27. Sorry, it's 27 and verse 26, right? Verse 26 in chapter 27. Because in 28 verse 8, Denn in 28 Vers 8 says, they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. So he's dying the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. It says the east wind has broken thee in the midst of the seas. So I'm only saying this is why why are you isolating that to the south and, and not just why not also the east? So warum wird der Schrecken der Nationen nur auf das Süden bezogen und nicht das Osten auch? I, I, I'm not sure. Yes, yes. You, you, okay, uh, we'll come to this. Okay, I mean, you, you may be right, but I'm just. Uh, we will discuss this. Okay, I came to this conclusion because they inflict the deadly wound. Also, I came to this conclusion because they inflict the deadly wound. Because it's the south that does the deadly wound. Because it's the south that does the deadly wound. Because it's the south that does the deadly wound. My, my point is the east is a is a collective punishment on upon both the north and the south. Und das Ostmacht ist eine kollektive Bestrafung auf sowohl den Südmacht als auch den Norden. Okay, but I, I got a problem. I got a question. Yes. You, you're you're taking you're taking one story, and, and I agree that in one story it's the south that inflicts the deadly wound. But we're studying line upon line. That's the only point I'm, I'm arguing why I'm making that. No, type must meet anti-type. Right? I'm not denying. I'm not denying the South is there, but I'm saying specifically, you're taking one story to mean that the, it's only that there. But what I'm saying, when you're bringing line upon line together, they're both there. So why is it not both? Because type must meet anti-type. You must show how the East inflicts a deadly wound to the papacy. 
Also man muss wohl zeigen können, also basierend auf dem Prinzip von Typus muss den Antitypus begegnen. Das heißt, dass man muss zeigen, dass ähm, das Osten eine tödliche Wunde okay. ähm, versteckt. Maybe, 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 okay. maybe, maybe we can go to the quote here. Also vielleicht können wir zu einem Zitat gehen. Because we started with a thought, right, that the east wind represents this fire coming down from heaven. Denn wir haben angefangen mit einem Gedanke, dass der Ostwind diese Feuer, der vom Himmel fällt, darstellt. Okay. And, and we just read here Ezekiel 28. Und wir haben gerade hier Hesekiel 28 gelesen. Verse 7 and 8, let's just read it again. Die Verse 7 und 8, und wir lesen das noch einmal. It says, Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. And they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. So, yeah, basically, um, we saw in Ezekiel 30, it was, uh, it was the terrible of the nations was the power that inflicted the deadly wound against Egypt. So, we have in Ezekiel 30 seen that the Macht, that the tödliche Wunde against Egypt vollstreckte, was the Schrecken der Nation. Okay, now let's go to our notes. So, now to the Notizen. Wenden wir. Okay, let's go to page 2. Und auf Seite 2. And let us read this quote from GC. Dieses Zitat von Großen Kampf, und das ist unter Ezekiel 38, auf Seite 2. Okay, and there she will quote here Ezekiel 28, 6 to 8, and here we just read. Zitiert sie Hesekiel 28, die Verse 6 bis 8, also die Versen, die wir soeben gelesen haben. Okay. So it says here, notwithstanding, that's now after the thousand years. Also nach den tausend Jahren fängt sie hier an. Notwithstanding that Satan has been constrained to acknowledge God's justice and to bow to the supremacy of Christ, his character remains unchanged. The spirit of rebellion, like a mighty torrent, again bursts forth. Filled with frenzy, he determines not to yield the great controversy. The time has come for a last desperate struggle against the King of Heaven. He rushes into the midst of his subjects and endeavor, endeavors to inspire them with his own fury and arouse them to instant battle. So he rushes into the midst of his subjects, which is he rushes into the midst of the seas. Right? Also, er stürzt in den Mitten von seinem um, <laughs> Untertanen und natürlich die Völker stellen die Meere dar, also er stürzt sich inmitten der Meere. But of all the countless millions whom he has allured into rebellion, there are none now to acknowledge his supremacy. His power is at an end. The wicked are filled with the same hatred of God that inspires Satan. But they see that the case is, case is hopeless, that they cannot prevail against Jehovah. Their rage is kindled against Satan and those who have been his agents in deception, and with the fury of demons they turn upon them. So, who was Satan's agents of deception? So, where was Satan's agenten der Verführung? No, it was basically the threefold union, right? Also, the threefold union. Because Islam is the power that destroys. Right. Islam is the Macht that destroys them. Yes, and the threefold union is the power he uses to deceive. And the threefold union is the Macht that he uses to deceive. So, he is now in the midst of the seas, in the midst of the nations. So, he is in the middle of the sea, also in the middle of the nations. And let's continue. Let's go further. Saith the Lord, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness, they shall bring thee down to the pit. So, what do we see here? What does she now do? So, what see we here? What, what tut she? She quotes Ezekiel 28. And she says, when his own subjects rise up and go now against Satan and his agents, so when his own subjects rise up and go now against Satan and his agents, so when his own subjects rise up and go now against Satan and his agents, so when his own subjects rise up and go now against Satan and his agents, so when his own subjects rise up and go now against Satan and his agents, so when his own
Willen und gegen Satan und seine Agenten which is the seas that now rise up against the north basically was die Seen sind die aufkommen gegen das Norden and she says this is now Ezekiel 28 verse 7 to 8 sie sagt dass das Ezekiel 28 verse 7 und 8 6 bis 8 so I, 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 not, you may be correct but I'm arguing with your arguments you, you're you're using those things to make your arguments and it's not no, I'm, I'm not done with no, no no I'm just saying but the, the point is right that who, who deceives all the Muslims? Wer ist es, der den Muslim verführt? Okay, also because Baron 9 sagt es, dass die verführen. Is this, the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Right? So, the, the millions of Muslims, because you yourself put it up there. Okay, right? so... Uh, I'm, I'm just making that make this point, right? Because in Revelation 9, right, the, the angel comes down to heaven, the bottomless pit is opened, right? Mm -hmm. In Revelation 11, the, the star comes down from heaven, the bottomless pit is opened. Mm -hmm. And you yourself made this point that the second wall and the French Revolution are all part of the same thing. Yes. It's the south and the east, mm -hmm. right? They are both, they're, they're both representing this destroying power here, right? But the... Uh, Revelation 9 is a perfect representation of Satan's agents, right? They have this perfect character. That, that's what it, it's showing right here, right? Yes. So, I, I'm just saying, based on those arguments you're making, I, I don't know that that's... Okay, let us just take your thought then. Okay. So, if you would say that his agents in deception is also Islam, then you must say, you know, the, the people, the south, now rises up against the north and the east. Also, when... Say that again. No, why? No, because when you say that um, Satan and his agents are also the die, die, uh, Islam, darstellen. Islam darstellen, then you must be saying now the people rise up against the north and the east. Then must you wohl auch sagen, dass die Volk aufkommen gegen das Norden und das Osten. No, because it says here, right, the last sentence: their rage is kindled against Satan. Mm -hmm. And those who have been his agents in deception. Yeah, yes. So they rise up now against the north, which is his agents of deception, and the east, according to you, which is also his agents of deception. You're, you're missing the point. Those people from the south, where do they come from? They come from the north. They're the same entity. It's a revolution. It's from within. And the people from the, the Islam, you're going to tell me there's no Muslims there rising up? They realize they've been deceived? Of course they're rising up. They're going to come against the Mullah and the Ayatollahs and all those people that Satan used as his agents. That's who's rising up there. It's all those people that realize they're part of a fake religion and all those leaders that Satan has used to deceive them, to bring them into those religions, that's where they're rising yeah, against. So you must be saying they rise against the North and the East. That's what you're saying. I'm not saying that. I'm but, saying but, but who's the Mullahs? They're not, they're not the North, right? No, look. Just based upon this, right? It's all everybody there. It's all the wicked. All the wicked includes Islam, right? Includes everybody. Includes all the Sikhs. Includes all the false religions of the world. They're all getting sucked into worship on Sunday, apart from radical Islam, right? But when it comes to the end here, they're all going to realize they've been deceived, and yes. all the people that were under these false shepherds are going to rise up against them, no matter who they are. Okay. So let us just clarify, for instance, the, the moderate Muslim, Muslims, right? Yes. They would be considered the north, right? Those false teachers of them. They will be part of the south that rise against their leaders, right? Because they, they are all going to worship on Sunday. Yes, the so they would rise against the north, right? Yes, but the... But the, but the radical Islam, yes. they're, they're not part of the, those... No, they would rise up against their mullahs and ayatollahs yes, and whatever so, you want And they would be then the east, right? Look, it's just about realizing that at the end of the world here, it's marking a revolution of all the people that's been deceived. That's what it's teaching. Otherwise, you're going to say that here in this illustration, there's no radical is Islamist there that got deceived. That would be silly. No, You'd have to be saying that they're there. But you must be saying then it's rising up against the north <coughs> and the east. I'm not using those expressions. I'm using the point that it's marking a revolution from within that rise up against the false teachers. That's what is marked. Okay, and then show me from God's word where you see this in the past. That the south rises against the north and the east. 
I'm not saying the South, I'm saying it's everybody, I'm marking them both in there. That's what the point I'm making. The same is, it's right there, it's marking them both. Okay, and then show me. Where, where is it? I mean... You're, well, you're making a solid argument. No, no, it's a valid argument. No, you're... Yeah, okay, I, I would comment. Um, because <coughs> we, 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 we make this uh, statement that at the end, you know, we try to determine North and South and things like this. But if you... Look in Genesis 16, verse 12. Also, wenn wir in 1. Buch Mose 16, Vers 12 schauen, says, let's talk about Ishmael. Es spricht über Ishmael, 1. Buch Mose 16, Vers 12. It says, And he will be a white man, and his hand will be against every man, and every man against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all the brothers. So, the spirit that is illustrated here from Ishmael is that he is against everybody and everybody is against him. Also der Geist, der hier von Ishmael dargestellt ist, ist, dass er gegen jedermann und jedermann this ist auch gegen ihn. And yes, it's the children of the flesh, basically. Also Kinder des Fleisches. And uh, I think that the, perf the perfect Geist. illustration of the children of the flesh, obviously, is this open rebellion. Und okay. der Darstellung der Kinder des Fleisches ist offene Rebellion. Du kannst das sowohl in den Islam sehen, als auch in die Nationen, dass dieses offene, rebelliöse Geist haben. And they all have the same Leader above them, what you see, right? Die alle haben denselben Anführer, dessen letztendlich Satan ist. So, so, so uh, I think what Frau Mark really wants to illustrate is that you, you see similar aspects in both entities. Well, that's know, the point I'm making. Also, was man sehen kann, ist, man, man kann sehen ähnliche Aspekte in beide Entitäten, sowohl yeah. das Süden als auch das Osten. So, I think that's something we, we need to consider in order to understand it also. But, yes. but Still, it doesn't hold that the South rises against the East, right? No, I'm not sure that, I mean, at, at least from my perspective, that, 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 that's saying that. You, you not that, that, that we don't head. want to say that. But because the, 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 the I think the, 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 the problem, I, I might be totally wrong about it, obviously, is that we say, let's read the quote in Great Controversy, that we try to identify North, South and East in there. Also den Zitat im großen Kampf, wir versuchen zu identifizieren Norden, Süden und Osten darin. Und die haben alle denselben Anführer Satan und äh, was auch immer für eine Klasse er benutzt, um den Menschen zu verführen. Right, and And sometimes, you know, in some cases he's using like the Pope, in other cases he's using, to, because the, the, the Muslims, you know, they are deceived by somebody whom Satan is using in order to keep them in their state. Yes. Also Satan like benutzt the, wohl jemanden, um den, um, den Muslim in ihrem um, getäuschten Zustand zu halten. But it's always the, the prophetic symbols, right? Aber es ist immer die prophetische Symbol. So the, the Lord doesn't illustrate the East as the work of deception. Der Herr stellt nicht den Osten als das Werk der Verführung dar. For whom? Yeah. For, for, for the God's three, people. For the, yeah. No, for the threefold union. Yes, and it's also for God's people. It's not, uh, not uh, entity of deception. No. Nobody falls for Islam. So right? es ist nicht einem, einem Werk der Verführung von Islam, Gottes Volk zu täuschen. Also keine Wert für den Islam. It says there's 200 million of them. So somebody deceived them. Yes, but also die Bibel sagt, es gibt 200 Millionen davon. The, the also jemand hat sie verführt. So no, no, I'm saying it doesn't illustrate the work of deception on the, on the symbol of the world. That's neither here nor there. But this is an illustration here of everybody at the end of the world. You can't discount them. That's the only point I'm making. And the Bible shows that they both, that he ties them together there in the second wall. That's the point I'm making. Right. So, I mean, I, I can't agree with that because the East is not the symbol of deception. Okay, it's not the symbol of, not of destruction. Just so therefore, when it speaks about deception, it speaks about the North and it uses the South 
Is the opposite power. Also wenn ich spreche okay. über Verwirrung, es nutzt den Nordmacht und den Südmacht ist das entgegengesetzten Kraft. Okay, so, and this is exactly what the Lord wants to show us here at the end of the world, because there's nothing new at the end of the world. Und das ist das, was der Herr uns am Ende der Welt zeigen möchte, denn am Ende der Welt gibt es nichts Neues. You have the South rising against the North. Es gibt den Süden, die gegen den Norden aufkommen. But then you also have the East power. Aber okay. dann gibt es auch hier markiert den Ostmacht. Yeah, in the east is the fire coming down from heaven. Das Ost ist das Feuer, die vom Himmel herabkommt. So first we see here the south rising against the north. So zuerst können wir hier sehen, dass den Süden gegen den Norden aufkommt. And then we can see when we now jump down to the next paragraph. Und wir sind immer noch in den Notizen in diesem Zitat von großen Kampf und wenn wir zum zweiten Absatz herabkommen. It says every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. Dritter Absatz. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. The indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Upon the wicked he shall rain quick burning coals, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Fire comes down from God out of heaven, the earth is broken up, the weapons concealed in its depth are drawn forth, the roaring flames burst from every yawning chasm. So here we see this other punishment, this fire coming down from heaven. Here can we see this other Bestrafung, sehen, this fire, die from Himmel herabkommt. So, uh, as I understand it, this now represents the East. So, wie ich das verstehe, das stellt das Osten dar. The, the, this illustration, it's real fire and brimstone content, yes, right? Exactly. Okay, typified so, by. Okay, typified before that. Right? Yes. yes. So, no, hier no. spricht es über tatsächliches Feuer, die von Himmel herabfällt, und das würde vorausgeschattet durch den Islam. Okay. Just saying that this illustration here does not Islam do. No, no, of course. Not. Okay. Also, so, but it, it's the East punishment. That's my point. Ist der Ost Bestrafung? Okay, so before this final punishment done by God Himself, so noch before this finale Bestrafung, die von Gott selbst ausgeführt wird, yeah, Islam always typified this work of this fire coming down from heaven. Islam wird immer diesen Macht vorausschatten von das Feuer, der vom Himmel herabkommt. Yeah. And it comes upon the north and the south. That's my point. Okay. Und dieses Bestrafung, dieses Feuer vom Himmel, es kommt auf den Norden. Und den Süden, und das ist mein Punkt. So, therefore, yeah, because 9-11 uh, affected both the North and the South. Right? Den 11. September, das hat ein, ein Einfluss auf sowohl das Norden und das Südmächten. So, therefore, that's, that's what I wanted to show. That you, you, uh, and we also asked the question, who comes first? Und wir ja. haben die Frage immer gestellt, wer kommt zuerst, den Süden so, oder den Osten? First comes the south. Zuerst kommt den Süden auf. Then comes the east. Dann kommt das Osten auf. But the east come is, is basically a punishment because the Lord wants to he uses the south to punish the north. Also er benutzt den Süden, um den Norden zu äh, bestrafen. But he uses then the east to punish north and south. Aber dann okay. nutzt er den Osten, sowohl das Norden als auch Süden zu bestrafen. Okay. And that's basically the point I wanted to get to tonight. Und das war im Grunde der Punkt, zu dem ich heute Abend ankommen wollte. Also im dritten Absatz sagt es: Upon the wicked he shall rain quick burning coals, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. Right? Mm -hmm. So this was one of the points that was brought up this morning, because in, in Psalm 83 it says, persecute them, persecute right. them with thy tempest. Yes. Also spricht über diese, diese Tempest, diese Wind. Yes. Psalm 83, es sagt, verfolge sie durch dein Tempest. Exactly. Which is the east wind. Was okay. das Ostwind wäre. Okay. I think when we look at this illustration at the end, you know, the, um, the third coming, and we play around with these words like east and south and things like this. Um, because at the end, you know, when this event really will happen, there's no east, south, and some like this. No, it's just illustrated. Yeah, the, the east was typifying 
the punishment that Christ will execute because he's typifying he Satan's angels. Yes, yes, yes. Also am Ende, es gibt keine Osten und Süden und so weiter, weil da ist die perfekte Erfüllung all diese Dinge. Und davor, das Osten hat nur vorausgeschattet die Bestrafung, die der Herr am Ende bringen wird und alles. Also die Prinzipien können wir sehen, das perfekte Erfüllung dessen. Okay, Amen. Amen. Then let's close for this evening. Then let's close for heute Abend abschließen.